Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and welcome to the top 10 worst maps in Call of Duty history. I've done a number of top 10 videos here on my channel in the past, but they were primarily top 10 best. We're going to be switching things up today. We're going to be doing the top 10 worst maps in Call of Duty history. And there's only going to be three rules. Number one, all these maps are completely terrible. Number two, I'm not going to be featuring maps from the original Call of Duty up until Call of Duty 3. And number three, I'm not going to be featuring maps from the most recent Call of Duty, which at the time of this video being recorded is Call of Duty Black Ops 3, because I feel as though I'm not equipped to say any maps from COD 1 up to COD 3 are good or bad because I didn't play those games, as well as Black Ops 3 being the most recent Call of Duty. You can't say the map in Black Ops 3 is one of the worst ones in Call of Duty history because it hasn't had to take on the test of time like the rest of the maps that you're going to be seeing here in this video. So without further ado, I'm going to be listing my top 10 worst maps in Call of Duty history. And I hope you guys all enjoy the video. block from Call of Duty 4. Given the setting, this map could have been one of my favorite maps in Call of Duty history, but it turned out to be a real snooze fest every time you played on it. So it was set in Pripyat, which of course is in the Ukraine, and it's the abandoned city. This is an actual place in real life that was affected by the Chernobyl nuclear power incident and has been abandoned ever since. This is a place I would love to visit in real life. I love all the history of this place. I just love reading about it and looking at pictures of Pripyat. And then they made an entire map based upon it and it's like, yes, this is going to be amazing. Turns out not. The map itself had a very unique style. You had essentially this giant courtyard in the middle, and then you had two giant long buildings on either side of the map. Playing block in Call of Duty 4 was like playing a glorified game of Red Rover with guns. One team would set up residence in one building, and then the other team would set up in the other building, and hell hath no fury if you try to go in the middle of the map, because there's definitely going to be somebody with an M16 or a sniper rifle just ready to pick you off. It was a cool setting. It was a cool idea. It was a cool theme, but that idea of this trench warfare button building just really was wasn't that fun for a lot of people, like myself included, if you weren't sniping. Again, this map could be great if you were sniping and you really liked the idea of like crawling around and trying to pick people out of windows and whatnot, but for the average Call of Duty fan who just wants to run around with a submachine gun or a shotgun or maybe even a full auto assault rifle, this was one of the most annoying maps to actually play on. Although at times, like every map, it had its moments where it could be fun, but still, if I had to look back at all the Call of Duty 4 maps, I would say Block was definitely the worst and the one that I had the least fun playing on, therefore it comes in here at number 10. Fuel from Modern Warfare 2. What would it be like if Call of Duty was played on a Battlefield map? Well, Fuel answered that question for us with the second DLC in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. For 1600 Microsoft points, or whatever the equivalent was on PlayStation, fans like myself were able to play on this map, and boy was it not fun. It was really cool looking, I'll give them that. It was a really cool looking map, it was very interesting, it really felt like you were playing on a Battlefield map. Not only aesthetically, but also with the gameplay, you legitimately felt like you were playing a Battlefield map because it took you about 5 minutes to find anybody on this thing. Not only was Fuel ridiculously big and took so long for you to actually find an engagement, there was also a notorious glitch on this map. You could get inside this rock on the corner edge of the map. Yes, half this map was an open desert for some reason, and you could get inside it and people would just kill you from there all the time. There was really no way to kill them out of that rock once they were able to glitch into it, and even after Infinity Ward finally decided to patch this thing, which they weren't known for patches in Modern Warfare 2 whatsoever, there was another exploit to get back into the same rock, so this map was never playable during the Modern Warfare 2 life cycle. It was a really interesting idea, it definitely answered the question once again of what would it be like if Call of Duty was played on a Battlefield map, and it turns out it can be fun, it has its moments like all maps, but it just it was so not fun at the end of the day to try and play on this map if you were just an average COD fan who just wanted to run around with a submachine machine gun or assault rifle, just like blocking Call of Duty 4, if you didn't have a sniper rifle ready or if you weren't ready to just get shat on by this guy glitching into the rock, you weren't going to have fun on fuel. And that's why it comes in here at number 9. Turbine from Black Ops 2. I had a feeling a lot of people were going to think this map was going to be on the list, and I hope it did not disappoint because Turbine was one of my least favorite maps in Call of Duty Black Ops 2, a game that otherwise had a lot of great maps to speak of. Turbine itself could have been great if they would have actually committed to the theme. The idea of Turbine is it's going to be a very long map with some nice long lines of sight, but what they typically do in Call of Duty these days is they're afraid to make a big open map for whatever reason. The last time we saw big open maps was probably back in Modern Warfare 2, going back to the fuel example, but if you look at Turbine, it 
it's supposed to be a big open map, but instead they decide to just clutter it with everything. So it becomes one of those horrible maps where it takes forever to do anything. If you want to get from one end of the map to the other, it's going to take you ages. Not because the map is necessarily long, but they artificially make it even bigger just by putting a bunch of random rocks and a bunch of random debris and just a bunch of gunk all throughout the map. It just did not play very well. It was definitely one of my least favorite maps to play on. It felt like work, and when should video games ever feel like work? It felt like work to play on this map because it took forever to do anything or to find anybody. The setting wasn't really that great, and just ultimately, I didn't have any fun playing on Turbine. Sure, I had some games, like every map, I occasionally had fun on it, but for the most part, I dreaded when this map would show up in the map rotation, and more often than not, my friends and I would just back out if we had to play this map. We'd rather just play on something else or even wait an extra minute or so to find a good map because, in my opinion, Turbine was not a lot of fun to play in Black Ops 2, and that is why it comes in here at number 8. Carnival from Modern Warfare 2. Yet another Modern Warfare 2 DLC map has made its way into my top 10 worst maps list, and for good reason. Carnival was a fundamentally terrible map. Now, if you look at it from the outside, you can say, what was so bad about this map, Nero? It was a carnival set in Brazil. It looks like it could be fun. Wrong. This map had no color whatsoever, and it actually affected the gameplay. You guys hear me complaining all the time that I like maps that have bright, vibrant colors. And while, yes, Carnival had no color whatsoever, it actually affected the gameplay. It actually made so you could not see people very well. Everybody blended in on this map to the point where you could not actually tell if somebody was running at you, or if that was just a bit of foliage moving off in the distance. It was ridiculous in that sense. Leave it to Infinity Ward to take a Brazilian Carnival and give it no color whatsoever. Aside from that, the setting is actually kind of cool. Once again, Brazilian Carnival, you're running around on roller coasters and you have these fun houses and these rides and whatnot. It was a nice contrast compared to what we had seen previously from Infinity Ward, where typically their map design philosophy is, let's put some rubble here and some rubble over here and some more rubble over here. It was nice to see them kind of think outside the box with the idea of a carnival, which could have been very fun. And it was fun to play on the map when it first came out, right? You're running around on the roller coaster, once again, going inside fun houses and going up inside this rocket ship that has a nice vantage point up there and whatnot. It was cool from that respect. But the map itself didn't play very well. It just didn't really have any real flow to it. The theme was cool, but there was no color, there was no flow, and just was not a fun map to play on. Although if I were actually awarding points in this video, I would actually give Carnival a couple of extra points for being the map where former Infinity Ward community manager Rubber Bowling was forever dubbed the Stealth Clown. And so their sight lines, they're running through and they're like, oh, it's just a clown, it's fine. But I had my gun posted up there at his hand, like just picking guys off. And I love that because it was a perfect moment of like, they have no clue I'm even here. I'm, I'm a stealth clown. Downturn from Modern Warfare 3. This is yet another Infinity Ward map that has an amazing concept for a theme that just has mountains of rubble shat all over it. So Downturn is set in a war-torn version of New York City. And as an American, I like the idea of having these maps actually set in America, stuff that I can actually recognize and relate to. It's interesting that way. Modern Warfare 2 is the first version of Call of Duty to actually have some maps actually set in America. And I love Infinity Ward for doing that because it makes it interesting not having every map actually just set in some Russian city somewhere, right? It's fun when they actually make it so it's stuff that you can actually recognize like when they do stuff in the UK or do stuff in America it's interesting I understand that but downturn was just a poorly designed map from the very beginning we had a giant bank in the middle that was completely full of rubble we had a nice subway station that was also full of rubble we had a nice building that was falling apart therefore full of rubble we had a street that was covered in rubble and on the other side of the map we had another street that was also covered in rubble and there ladies and gentlemen is the entire map rubble simulator 2011 I didn't enjoy this map whatsoever it didn't have a lot of color it didn't play very well in my own personal opinion and even though I would occasionally do well on this map like you're seeing in the gameplay I just didn't have fun playing on it it was just not a very good map in my own personal opinion in terms of its design like from the very beginning it was a bad map because it did not have a very good design and this is not only my personal opinion but it's also the opinion of a lot of you guys because I asked you guys on Twitter what would you guys rate the worst map in Call of Duty history now a lot of people mentioned downturn from Modern Warfare 3 in their response and that's because it just wasn't a very good map there's not really a whole lot to say it's a really cool theme really cool concept covered in rubble and and just wasn't very well executed. It just was not a very fun map to play on in my own personal opinion. And that is why it comes in here at number six. Instinct from Advanced Warfare. Instinct is another one of those maps that has a pretty cool theme. We're sitting in a South American jungle. We have a little bit of a temple shrine there in the very middle, but ultimately the map itself did not play very well. That's all I really have to say about Instinct. I can't go on too long about it and say, oh, I didn't like this or didn't like that. Just ultimately, I did not like the way this map played. Each game has its own worst map. 
right? Every game has its worst map. And while it's all subjective, a lot of people really didn't like this map. That worst map was Instinct from Advanced Warfare. A lot of people thought it was the worst map in that game, and I would definitely tend to agree because I did not have fun flying on this map whatsoever. Essentially, we had this focal point in the very middle of the map that people would always fight for, and if your team had control of it, you would try and pick people off that were across the map. And then there's also going to be counter snipers on the other end of the map waiting for you to get on top of the shrine. And just ultimately, the map didn't actually have any flow. It was definitely just long lines of sight with people trying to pick people off across the map. It just wasn't fun to play on. It was just that map for me. So I brought it here at number five because I really, really disliked playing on this map. I just had no fun with it whatsoever. Usually if it were to show up in the map rotation, I would just back out because I would rather not play it. I'd rather wait an extra couple of minutes to find a new lobby as compared to have to suffer through playing Instinct and Advanced Warfare. Just in my opinion, the worst map in Call of the Advanced Warfare. I had no fun with it whatsoever. And I really can't go into too much more detail than that. Just I, I like the setting. I like the theme. I like the colors even. It was a nice looking map. Just I hated the way that it played with a passion. Therefore, it comes in here at number five. Aftermath from Black Ops 2. Rubble. Do you guys like Rubble? I'm not a big fan of Rubble. Are you noticing a trend with a lot of these maps on this top 10 list? This was that map for Call of Duty Black Ops 2. It was the map that I think was collectively agreed upon by the community as the worst map in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. It was not fun to play on whatsoever. Look at what we have here, right? We have a large map covered in rubble, not a lot of gray color, no flow whatsoever. It felt like Turbine, if we go back to number 8, Turbine, it has that same kind of problem where it's a large map made even larger by the fact that they randomly just throw a bunch of junk everywhere. Here's a bus here. Here's a bunch of rubble here. Oh, here's a fallen building here. Here's a sign here. Just a bunch of stuff kind of getting in the way between you and where you want to go. So it was a pretty big map that already wasn't fun to play on to begin with. That was made even worse by the fact that there's so much extra stuff on that map for really no reason that you have to go through. You can't just run from one end of the map to the other and get there very quickly. You have to trudge through buildings and trudge through rubble and just all this gunk. There's always going to be people waiting around every single corner. It was just not a fun map whatsoever to play on. I hated that map. I used to do a ton of open lobbies back in Black Ops 2 in my channel was much smaller and it was a lot easier to kind of manage that kind of a thing and we never played on this map if it were to show up in the map rotation and some of you guys that are still around that used to do the open lobbies with me back in black ops 2 vouch for me in the comments we never played aftermath we would back out of that so quickly because we all hated this map and everybody seemed to agree that it was the worst map in call of duty black ops 2 and that is why it comes in here at number four Bakara from Modern Warfare 3. You guys know it would be a really cool concept for a map? A really filthy green market in Somalia. That'd be a really fun map, right? You just we'll have a bunch of garbage everywhere, and then we're just going to tint everything green. Just green in the buildings, green outside, green sky, green ground, green everything. That's what we're going to do with this map, and it's going to be very fun. Oh, better yet, let's make it ridiculously long, and let's make it ridiculously wide, and just put a bunch of random junk everywhere. Does that sound fun? Does that sound like a map you guys like to play on? Because that's Vakara from Modern Warfare 3. I hated this map with a passion. It was by far my least favorite map in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I had no fun playing this map whatsoever, even though I would do well on it for the vast majority of the time because I played with a full party. Back in Modern Warfare 3 it was a little bit different. I always had a group of people to play with and when I hit 10th prestige in that game my win-loss ratio was like above an 18.0. Like we won every game because we always played together. And so I typically had a lot of fun in Modern Warfare 3 but Pakara... It, it did its best to try and just ruin that fun. I swear it did. It was not fun to play on whatsoever. I hated the map. It was all uphill for the most part, and you had people constantly trying to take you out. You had snipers at the top of the hill, snipers at the bottom of the hill, snipers in the building, snipers on the side buildings. It was just not fun whatsoever to play on. It's like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This is all completely subjective. It's all my own personal opinion, but again, just looking at this map, I get angry. Like, why is there so much green? Why did they pick green for everything? Why is there so much just junk everywhere? This was Who thought this would be a fun map to play on? I just... I hate Pakara. It is by far my least favorite map in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and that's saying something because that game had a lot of stinkers, but this map, no pun intended, stunk the worst, given the fact that there's garbage everywhere. It just, it was a terrible map. I did not enjoy it, and that's why it comes in here at number three. Showtime from Call of Duty Ghosts. I don't even know where to begin, guys. I just, this is the most disappointing abomination of a map that I've seen in Call of Duty in a very, very long time. This map was supposed to be the best map ever. This is supposed to be the triumphant return of Call of Duty Ford's shipment into a modern game. Ever since Modern Warfare 2, where they changed up the killstreak system and added in a bunch of really cool and interesting ones, aside from just the standard 357 that we saw in Call of Duty 4 and World at War, everybody was wondering what would it be like if we could take these really cool killstreaks and play with them on a map like Shipment. If you guys don't remember, or perhaps you just didn't play Call of Duty 4 10 years ago when the game came out, which I don't blame you, that was a very long time ago, let me kind of explain for you guys what Shipment 
shipment actually was. I'm actually going to show you some gameplay here on shipments and actually just run around the map for you guys. This was, and still is, the smallest map in Call of Duty history. Just looking at it, there's nothing to this map whatsoever. It's essentially a small field where they put down a bunch of crates, there's a couple of cars or garbage cans in the corner, and that's it. That is shipment. It's the smallest map in Call of Duty history, and the reason why fans like myself look back at it with these rose-tinted goggles is because it was a lot of fun to play on. Even if you were a terrible player, you could walk out a domination match on shipment with 70 kills. It was not uncommon for people to get 100, 110, 120 kills if they were a good player on this map every single game of domination because it was so fast-paced and so hectic. It was a lot of fun, and players have always wondered what would it be like if that map wasn't only in Call of Duty 4, where the kill streaks were 357. What if it was in Modern Warfare 2 or Call of Duty Ghosts or Modern Warfare 3 or Black Ops 2 or whatever, right? What if it was in these newer games where we actually have really powerful kill streaks aside from just an airstrike and a helicopter? This was supposed to be that. Showtime was supposed to be that. When they announced it for Call of Duty Ghosts, everybody was excited, myself included, to see Shipment finally return in Call of Duty after all these years. And Infinity Ward being Infinity Ward, they couldn't just leave well enough alone. They couldn't just take this amazing map and give us the map that we wanted. They had to ruin it somehow. So what they did is they took your standard shipment and then expanded upon it. They made it so you could actually go outside. They made it so the map itself is essentially a death arena where occasionally those crates that we remember from shipment would occasionally open up and fill the arena with gas or fill the arena with sentry guns that would all shoot you. And oh, let's just make it even more interesting by just dropping in a bunch of care packages left and right and just make it so everyone can get some. It was the worst abomination that I have ever seen. It's just, why? Why would they do that? They ruined shipment. I hated it. I am still mad to this day that Infinity Ward took something that I loved from my past something that I loved from my teenage years growing up when I was first getting into Call of Duty like shipment and just defiled it by making Showtime a map in Call of Duty Ghosts. It was the worst abomination. It comes in here at number two and it would have been number one had my number one choice not been the worst map in Call of Duty history. Chasm from Call of Duty Ghosts. This is, in my opinion, the worst map in Call of Duty history. Looking back at all the maps I've listed, even here in this list, I would rather play any of those maps as compared to being forced to play on Chasm. Chasm is the worst map in Call of Duty history. I'm not even sure you can define it as a map. If we look up in this imaginary dictionary that would tell us what a Call of Duty map is, I don't think it would qualify under any definition because it's essentially an ant farm. That's what this map is. It's a giant ant farm. There's no actual flow to this map whatsoever. There is just a bazillion ways to get everywhere all the time. Everybody's constantly just running around in this giant ant farm of a map, and occasionally you would run into somebody, and you'd either kill them or they would kill you. That's what this map would come down to. Infinity Ward being Infinity Ward, they love to just put rubble everywhere, and that's what they did. Like Downturn, which was also listed on this list back there at number 6, if you guys recall, it was a map that was in Modern Warfare 3. It's kind of similar to that, because they took a United States city, like New York, we saw a downturn, but this time it was Los Angeles, and they made it a Call of Duty map, which could have been really cool. But this is a war-torn Los Angeles where we're playing in a giant building that's broken down for some reason, that's just covered in rubble and just no fun whatsoever to play on. Again, looking at this map, I'm completely reminded of an ant farm. There was really no flow to this map whatsoever. There was a bazillion different ways to get everywhere, and it was no fun to play on. I hate this map. And again, if I look at all of these maps, right, I looked at all the maps in Call of Duty history, I was looking down the list many times thinking back really quickly as to what maps I enjoyed as compared to what maps I hated, there is not a single map in Call of Duty history that I would pick Chasm over. It was the worst map in Call of Duty history, in my opinion. I thoroughly hated it with every fiber of my being, and that is why it comes in here at number one. Although I will say... Showtime was very close to game number one, but looking back at it, if I had to choose between playing between Chasm and Showtime, I think I'd rather play on Showtime, because at least Showtime's kind of a map, right? You have at least you know where people are coming from. Sure, it's awful in every possible respect, but Chasm is just worse. I would never want to play on Chasm again. It was by far the worst map in Call of Duty history, in my own personal opinion, and ladies and gentlemen, that is why I came in here at number one. That is going to conclude my top 10 worst maps in Call of Duty history video. I hope you guys all enjoyed I hope you guys took this video lightheartedly right? I don't want people to think I'm trying to be super negative for the sake of being negative. It's a top 10 worst video, right? I had to give the worst maps, in my opinion, in Call of Duty history and give details as to why and give you guys reasonings behind my choices. So I did. I told you why I hate all of these maps. They're by far my least favorite maps in Call of Duty history. I definitely look back at all the maps that were available to us going from Call of Duty 4 all the way up to Advanced Warfare, and I really, after revising it a couple of times, I'm like, yeah, this is definitely my list. This is, these, these are the maps I feel as well, the worst ones in Call of Duty history. I ranked them 1 through 10, and here 
here is the video. And I understand that some people don't like it when you're super negative in a video, but it's like, what are you supposed to do? It's a top 10 worst, you know? So I tried to add in a little bit of humor. I tried to make it a little bit lighthearted. I didn't want to make it a super dark video. Like, no, this was the worst map in Call of Duty history. You guys don't understand. It was the worst thing ever. I'd rather die than play on it or anything like that. Like, it was, these maps do, these maps are terrible, right? They're all completely awful in my own personal opinion. But I hope I was able to make an entertaining video out of that. And I hope you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what maps you guys will put on this list that weren't already on there. And of course, drop me a rating if you guys enjoyed the video because it helps the video grow. It helps my channel grow as well. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop me a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Thank you.